Today I'm going to talk to you about rubber bridges. Now what is a rubber bridge? Well you might have heard people talking about them because they are literally everywhere in the music industry right now. The rubber bridge essentially acts as a dampener to whatever instrument you're trying to use it with. And if it sounds a bit daunting, the idea of making your own guitar into a rubber bridge guitar, it's not. It's easy, it's quick, it's affordable, and you are more than capable of doing it at home on your own. In fact, I haven't even changed my white shirt that I was wearing for my meeting this morning to prove to you how completely unlabor intensive this entire process is. Now, a rubber bridge is pretty much exactly what it says on the tin, minus the fact that you could say, actually, it's a rubber saddle instead of a rubber bridge. The saddle is the thing that sits at the point in which the strings break on the bridge end of the guitar, and that's the thing we're concerned with. So yes, bridge, saddle, rubber saddle. Now saddles traditionally are made out of bone, but you know, in the modern guitar, in a factory made guitar, it's usually plastic or something synthetic. Ultimately, the material that is used for a saddle is hard. This allows a much easier transfer of energy and you're not losing any sound uh, by absorption, essentially. Now, as we know, rubber is a very pliable material. It's a lot softer. So if you swapped a bone saddle for a rubber saddle, what's gonna happen is the sound is going to be absorbed more and deadened as a result. Obviously that's not something which many people are trying to achieve when they build guitars, but you know, it's nice to have the option sometimes to mix it up and create different sounds. So I've got a guitar here, a victim, if you will. This is a brilliant low maintenance way to do a rubber bridge because the bridge itself on this guitar is called a floating bridge. I think it's called that, which means it's not glued down. So if you change the strings or whatever, then it has an adjuster on it so you can raise the height of the saddle, you can change the action, that kind of thing, but also you can move it to adjust to the intonation. Again, you don't need to use a guitar like this if you want to put a rubber saddle on. What you can do is just whip out the saddle and then replace that with a piece of rubber instead if you've got a bridge which is glued on. All acoustic guitars have removable saddles, so that shouldn't be a problem. But I thought I'd take advantage of the fact this bridge is adjustable, so instead of re replacing the entire bridge, I'm just going to pop a little rubber bit on top of that adjustable height thing, and that should work like a dream. I'm then gonna put some saddle slots in, which I have files for, but again, you can use any file, which is vaguely the gauge of a, an average guitar string. It's not like with a nut where you need specialist file gauges. So what am I gonna need for this project? Well, first of all, I need my guitar, and as I say, I've got a willing victim there. Second of all, I'm gonna need some rubber, and third of all, some kind of file. I'll also need a saw to cut my rubber if it's not to size when it arrives. For the rubber, I just typed in big block of rubber on Google. Didn't yield that many results, but then I went on to find out that this big block of rubber that I was seeking is also called a jeweler's block, which is just testament to the fact that 90% uh, of woodworking is just figuring out what stuff is called so you can order the correct part. And this was it. Here it is. Now, my saddles typically are like 70 mil. I allow 70 mil, and we got plenty of room on this jeweler's block here to do that. Before I cut into this though, let's play this guitar to see what it sounds like before the rubber bridge is on. So this is just with the normal plastic saddle. Oh yeah, by the way, for a guitar maker, I suck at the guitar. So I'm gonna keep it real simple because that's all I can do. While this guitar is not the best at hiding my bad playing, it is very characterful. It was built in the 1940s, and just to give you some context, here's a quick sound comparison of a guitar that was built fairly recently by me. Yeah, this one definitely feels less alive, but I think it's gonna sound great with a rubber bridge, so here we go. I started by removing the strings and then taking a measurement for the saddle height, which is obviously a very important value. Then I set about making the piece for the top of the floating saddle. As you can see, classic woodworker, I forgot that rubber doesn't behave in the same way as wood. So all you do in this situation is put a bit of plywood on the underside of what I've made here. That would sort it right out. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to skate over that because not many people have a fully kitted out workshop to do that. And I'm going to go on to making a rubber bridge in the style of replacing a full wooden bridge. Much easier, less complicated, and still does the job really nicely. I marked it out using the actual bridge. It was coming in a bit short, but again, all that matters is the saddle length, not the actual length of the bridge. I then took it to my bandsaw, but again, you can use a handsaw if you don't have a bandsaw. And then I just tidied it up with my sander. Again, very extra, you don't have to do that. It's gonna work fine if it's a little bit rough around the edges. The next part was literally just transferring the string spacing over, which you can absolutely do by using the old bridge, but you can also 
put the strings back on and then take the bridge off again and mark the indentations but that just requires an extra bit of effort so I just used the old bridge and that is literally it that is the entire process of making your rubber bridge it took me about 15 minutes to make two of those bridges admittedly if I'd bothered to put the plywood on it'd probably take me another 15 minutes but you know anyway let's have a listen and see how we got on I feel like the quite good news is that I seem to have managed to put the bridge in the right place because the intonation is absolutely wonderful ready this is trying to emulate is a style called palm muting except you can actually still play chords and finger pick also just bear in mind that pickups and amps are a massively important part of the rubber bridge experience i'm getting very like olden timey vibes which is great i love it it's a really really special sound it brought me back to like all of the Bob Dylan that I used to listen to as a teenager. I'd really like to try a rubber bridge on one of my instruments. I think that this soundboard is, is built very thickly, I can feel. So when I'm playing, I'm not getting the same experience that I would when playing a hand-built instrument. So yeah, let me know if you guys end up um, utilizing this video to do your own rubber bridge. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Ooh. I hope that you uh, were less intimidated by the process of making a rubber bridge. It's really, really simple. And I think we should all try and do stuff ourselves. Uh, but of course, support our local luthiers where appropriate. So if you just don't feel like you're up to it, then definitely go and do that. If you want to learn more about the fantastic luthier Ruben Cox, who popularized the rubber bridge, there's a really fantastic reverb article that I've linked to in the description below. So do check that out if it piques your interest. See you soon.